Well, I'm very pleased to say I am joined by trainer Jim Daly and owner David Mitchell, who is head of the Blue Tick Racing Syndicate. And they have a real contender, actually, for the Star Sports Derby at Nottingham in October in the shape of Blue Tick George. Uh, he's been a, a terrific dog uh, for you, David. First of all, I want to touch on his breeding because you actually source this dog. He's incredibly well-bred, isn't he? Yeah, he's out of uh, Log Hill Duke and JT China and... Um... JT in China's obviously got uh, JT Tornado and uh, uh, Turnhouse Jet, you know, two very good dogs. But the, the every litter she tends to throw has got top quality, you know, Category 1 dogs in it. You took a chance in buying him unraced. Jim, when did you think, I've got a dog on my hands here? I think we, we're giving him a couple of sprint trials around um, Harlow initially. And um, it was probably second one of those that, kind of got me a little bit excited that he has potential um he actually went on to prove that he, he enjoys racing at harlow i think he, he likes a tight bend and um yeah from his early experiences at harlow we thought we had something that had, had a nice bit of potential is it fair to say he's been quite unlucky with injuries in his career yeah he's had he's had a couple of setbacks uh, along the way um and when he first came over, it's kind of a little bit of a rush preparation for the Romford Puppy Cup. Um, he'd done well to make the final, um, and he was unlucky in the final. And then we went, we um, planned to take him up to, to Newcastle for the puppy competition up there. And um, and he came out of that competition sore with a, a sprain pop. Um, and so that kept him off for, for most of the winter. Um, and then we're bringing him back now. And then he's had a m another minor setback with a with a, a shoulder strain at home. Um, it's not serious, and you know he'll he'll bounce back from it. And it was just precautionary that we didn't run him. We maybe could have taken a chance with him at home, but just weighing it all up, we're probably ten weeks away from the derby starting, and you need a good build up for that. Yeah, less than that, in fact. It's going to be here before we know it. It's been quite a frustrating dog for you, uh, David, with, with the injuries. And you know he's full of ability. And he was coming back so well just before the lockdown hit, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a nice run back at, at Harlow and, um, and won that comfortably. So, yeah, things were going, you know, pretty much to plan for there, from there. And then, obviously, the lockdown situation. And then we brought him back at home. And he's had another minor setback. But uh, he's eight races into his career, so he's still a young, fresh dog. Um, and sometimes it's better to have a lightly race dog going into a derby. There's been many a lightly race dogs gone through the derby and, and either won it or run well. So um, I'm not too concerned about that he's only had eight races. And for you, David, as a syndicate, obviously that form before lockdown shows that he's still got ability. Uh, the excitement is really still there for you with this dog, isn't it? I, I sense it when we exchange messages about him. You're excited about him still. Yeah, he's, he's a very good dog, but he's, he's did some nice times at Harlow. He did some nice times at Swindon. He's ran well at Hove. You know, he's just touched off a nose behind Small Mead, who ran a fantastic race there. Um, so, and, and obviously the run for Puppy Cups and... and one track I didn't think he would take to since lockdown was Crayford, you know. Um, Jim took him to Crayford, gave him a four bend there and gave him a six bend there and he's, he's run fantastic. So I think his potential's still there. He's, he's only got eight races, like Jim said, and um, hopefully with the derby coming up, we can just get him right for it. Obviously, Harlow and Crayford would be very different tracks to Nottingham. How do you think Nottingham will suit him? I know he's been there for a sprint look round, but how do you think it'll suit him? Um, well, he, he, he drives a bend. He's probably the best dog I've ever owned for driving a bend. Um, he likes a good galloping track. Uh, I, was, I was shocked, really, when, um, when the suggestion was to take him to Crayford. We want to keep him ticking over. I didn't think he would run the track, and uh, I'm glad to see how you know, I was mistaken. But he um, did, what, a 23-13 there, which is, which is lightning. So um, he seems quite versatile in terms of the tracks that he's, that he's been to. So... I just uh, try and keep, keep quiet now when it comes to will he suit this track, will he suit that track, because he tends to run all tracks pretty well. I know that trainers prefer their owners to keep quiet, don't they, Jim? But uh, what do you think of him, Jim, at Nottingham? Do you, do you think it's a track that will suit him? Obviously, a decent run to the bend, but much bigger, more galloping track than Crayford. 
Yeah, it's, it is a much um, bigger track and much bigger bends. And um, I think he's still got to answer that question if he's still suitable. He's yet to win a race on a galloping track. And, um, and I think we need to try and aim him at more experience of Nottingham now in the build-up to the derby. Um, and then he can tick those boxes himself. So it is all about the derby. Given the fact you just said he hasn't won at a galloping track, do you think Star Sports 50 to 1 is a bit short or is that a price that you'd be taking a gamble on given his obvious speed? Um, it wouldn't be a price that I'll be looking to, to back him on, but you know there, there are plenty of owners that were backing him on potential to start with and, and Blue Tick's a big syndicate, so maybe a little bit of money has forced that price down to that, um, that level. Um, he's not had a great deal of racing on galloping tracks, to be fair. So, um, although he's still got to prove his ability on a galloping track, he's not had enough to say that 100% he's not suited to them. Um, it's just a question that he's got to answer to. David, have you backed him? We've 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 backed him with Star Sports at some bigger prices um, quite early on. Uh, so it is you when that's going down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When he ran a Harlow, as Jim said, he, yeah, I can't remember the time. Jim will know the time that he that he did a Harlow flying time. At that point, we, we decided, right, we're going to aim him at the derby and, and get a bit on early. And uh, yeah, the, the bookies have shot him into 50 to 1. So We look forward to seeing him at Nottingham very much. Uh, just the one dog going for you to Nottingham this year, David, but you seem to be getting into Greyhound racing more and more as time passes, including ownership in Australia, and uh, we all follow your dogs on social media, including Captain Dynamite, who seems to be your sort of leading dog over there. Any chance one day of bringing a dog over from Australia to compete here in the UK in the Derby? Uh, potentially, we would do that. Um, we have we have looked at opportunities to see uh, how to make it viable. Obviously, it's, it's been well documented, the prize money in Australia. Um, would, would it be financially viable? For a captain dynamite to come over, um, you know, in the prime of his career, probably not is the answer to that. But there's nothing to say that um, once a dog gets older, if we decide that we want to bring a dog over, uh, the, the turnaround's only 21 days um, from Australia to the UK. So there is potential either maybe if we want to bring a bitch over, we want because we want to, you know, breed her, or we get a dog that is at the end of the career. The, the potential is there to do that. You've also just started up the National Greyhound Supporters Club, which uh, I think is intended to bring together all the different sort of uh, fractions of people in the sport, trainers, owners, you know, a various uh, number of people. I'm sure your phone has been red hot since you started it. Uh, what's the ultimate goal of the Supporters Club? I think the Supporters Club is, is about bringing people together to, to unify uh, the, the stakeholders in the sport. I think um, with lockdown especially, uh, uh, the the owners, trainers, breeders, the 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 just the general feeling is that you know they they're sometimes forgotten about, especially when the decisions are being made. I know we've obviously got um, a trainer and owner a director, um, but I think for for everybody now, it's about coming together, joining as one, and then and then you know pushing ideas forward as a group. Do you feel like you can make your voice heard and, and make a difference? I can't see why not. You know, there's there's plenty of occasions throughout the lockdown and just ending the lockdown where people have um, made suggestions and changes have happened. You know, there were suggestions about streaming trials for owners and breeders and trainers, and I know that's been well received, uh, and that was kind of pushed through social media through the different stakeholders, the the trainers and owners and breeders wanting this to happen, and uh, it it comes with suggestions and it comes on people wanting to get involved and get together. It sounds good to me. And Jim, I think it's a reflection of the, the sort of fragmentation in our sport at the moment, the fact that this supporters club has been set up. What do you think about it all? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a positive thing. Um, we need to bring people together and, and, um, and be united in supporting the sport and, and trying to take it forward the best way we can. Um, there's a lot to be done and I'm really grateful to Mitch for, for the trial situation, getting those trials out there on the internet. Uh, it's, a, it's a massive bonus for owners to see their dogs trial uh, during a time when they can't go to the track. So um, yeah, anything we can do to make it a better sport, then I'm all for that. Absolutely. I think a lot of owners are very, very grateful to you, uh, David. So well done for that and good luck with the supporters club. 
happily for me, all politics get put aside during the derby and we can just talk about Blue Sick George and fantastic dogs like him. Uh, no doubting his ability. I really, really wish you two all the best at Nottingham for the Star Sports Derby. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks very much. much.